How to draw an owl? Step one: draw some circles. Step two: draw the rest of the owl. Simple, isn't it? Now this is a joke that has been going on around the internet for quite some time. But seriously, recently I was able to update World Blender to reach this kind of level. So anyway, let me just show you what I mean. Here is how to draw a mountain. This is our paper, right? And step one, we draw a circle, which is this node, like so. And step two, we draw the rest of the mountain. It's literally just that. It's super simple. It can't be any simpler than that. You literally just draw a circle, and then you draw the rest of the mountain. And let me just render and show you what the mountain looks like. You see, you have a very nice looking mountain like that. You see all of these little details, like the cut of the water coming down from the top of the mountain to the base, and uh, look at the the dirt. It's kind of gradually flattened out towards the bottom. And let's have a look at the rocks. You see, the mountain has these uh, very nice and very natural looking creases, and all of that was done automatically using this particle erosion node. This particle erosion node is the latest addition to the World Blender library, which is now available on my Gumroad and my Blender Market store. It's a free update, so if you bought World Blender before, you can now go back to wherever you. Bought it and download the latest version of World Blender Pro. It's the World Blender Pro 2024. All right. So I'm gonna go through all of these parameters later in another video. But in this video, I'm gonna I'm gonna just show you the power of this particular node. And uh, let's compare this with the Erosion 2 node, and connect this over like so. And for the sake of saving time, I'm gonna bake this before. Uh, showing the result to uh, the output. All right. So turn on the active in viewport and click bake. Okay, the baking is finished. This is the uh, erosion two node, and this is the particle erosion. And let's see the difference. So you see, this is uh, what the erosion two node does, and this is what the particle erosion node does. So you see, the difference is night and day. To be fair, though, the old erosion two node requires some details to begin with. So let me just add in some details and try again. Now, the erosion two node has something to work on, and let's bake again and see the uh, result. Okay, the baking is finished, and this is what the mountain looks like after the erosion two node, based on the high detail base like that. All right, so this is the result. And let's render this result. You see, it looks decent. It's all right, but let's compare that to the particle erosion. So I reset all of these values to default and baked the particle erosion node. And let's connect this to the output and see. You see, the difference is like day and night. Again. This is the erosion two node. It looks kind of alright, and this is the particle erosion. It's beautiful, beautiful. So let's have a look at the data, and let's drop in the simulation data and uh, visualize the flow. So you see, this is the flow map of the particle erosion, and uh, let's see the flow map of the old erosion two. So you see, it's kind of blurry down here, and it's it's uh, weird looking down here. Basically, the quality is uh, lower overall. And again, this is the particle erosion, and this is erosion two. Using the old erosion two nodes, if you want to uh, achieve this kind of details, you need to increase the uh, resolution to something very high. But as you can see, we are currently working on a 512 by 512 resolution, and we already achieve a very nice looking result. However, the particle erosion is a lot slower than the erosion two node. This one took around 10 seconds on my computer, while this one took 
around 30 seconds. Basically, if I double the resolution, then the time consumption of this node will increase by four times, while the particle erosion will consume an eightfold amount of time. So basically, it's uh, scaling by the power of three, while this one scaled by the power of two. However, using the particle erosion node, you don't have to play around with the parameters to get a good result. So yeah, using the erosion 2 node, you will have to spend more time configuring these numbers. While using the particle erosion node, you can pretty much just leave everything as is and you will have a nice looking result regardless. Okay, that's it for today. In the next video, I'm going to walk you through all of these uh, parameters. But for now, let's end the video here. Okay, I'll see you next time.